Okay. Now we were doing the IPR, and have you heard about this? It's a special 301 report by the United States Trade Representative. It's the office of the United States Trade Representative. Now what happens is there are different categories under this list and India has been kept into the priority checklist. The moment a country is placed into the priority checklist, it means that the US administration becomes very vigilant with respect to the IPR regime of that country. It means US Trade Representative Office, it assumes that the IPR laws and the IPR norms, mostly the TRIPS agreement and different kinds of IPR which we have already done, is not being followed in this country. And the US Trade Representative Office does everything that is in its capacity. It means both carrot and stick policy is applied to fix whatever are the barriers in the path of a smooth trade with respect to US companies. Now, you can see the hypocrisy here. It is not with respect to priority, with respect to two-way trade. They keep it in priority list if they feel that the US companies are not getting benefited. Obviously, that makes sense because it is United States trade representative and not United Nations trade representative. Are you clear with that? So, it is only with respect to the US policies. 2015, India was placed into the priority list and that has done a lot of uh, damage to the um, IPR, you can say, uh, sentiments in the country because many investors thought that India is not respecting the IPRs properly. Now, one thing you think of this, the suppose there is an investor from Norway or from Sweden or from any other such part who have, might not be having a lot of idea about India's IPR regime. But anyhow, USA is a global power and everybody looks up to USA, how they are behaving. So if it is found that USA in its special report has identified India as one of the countries where IPR is always violated or recursively violated or not respected then definitely you can understand that these investors coming from say countries like Norway, Sweden, Australia, etc. will also be moved by such report and will be desisting from investing in India. And you can understand if that happens, then the Indian economy will suffer. Also, the Indian innovation culture will suffer. Clear? So that is all what we will about we will learn in the first half of the class. So you right. Concerns with the Indian IPR regime. Concerns with the Indian IPR regime. Under that you give a heading special three zero one report. Special 301 report. Now, under that you write in paragraph from, this report is prepared annually. This report is prepared annually by the Office of United States Trade Representative. By the Office of United States Trade Representative, USTR. Under section 301 of the Trades Act of the Trades Act 1974, 1974, the USTR, the USTR office prepares the report, the USTR office prepares the report after conducting public hearings, public hearings where private sector lobbyists, where private sector lobbyists 
and foreign government representatives can participate can participate the focus is on improving trade potential the focus is on improving trade potential and exchange and commercial exchange kar lo and commercial exchange now you change the paragraph and write the report aims at highlighting the report aims at highlighting the different trade barriers the different trade barriers to us companies to us companies and products and products due to ipr laws due to ipr laws such as copyright patent and trademark in other countries in other countries each year the ustr each year the ustr identifies countries identifies countries which do not provide which do not provide adequate adequate an effective protection adequate and effective protection of intellectual property of intellectual property now suppose there may be countries which provide adequate protection net with respect to the ipr but adopts trade distortive policies it means do not provide a fair and transparent level playing field though you have the ipr but there is a lot of surreptitious subventions of it okay so you right or fair and equitable market access or fair and equitable market access to united states persons to united state persons and persons here mean legal persons united state persons that rely upon intellectual property that rely upon intellectual property have you heard about the uh, section 306 of the trades act 1974 this 301 is always in news but what is not in news is 306 now under 301 the ustr identifies the countries where ipr is not being respected under 306 the us government is empowered to put sanctions on such countries including economic sanctions clear so you right section 306 same under that same heading section 306 empowers the us government empowers the us government to put sanctions to put sanctions on such countries on such countries which are listed which are listed under section 301 report under section 301 report the 301 report contains list of countries contains list of countries with weak ipr regimes with weak ipr regimes in special 301 report countries are classified into the following groups countries are classified into the following groups 
first you write priority foreign countries priority foreign country now the 2019 report is yet to be published but so far as the last data is obtained only ukraine was a part of the priority countries clear means you have to be they are the one who violate the ipr the most clear second category priority watch list priority watch list now it contains countries like india russia china so you can write it contained countries like india russia and china then watch list watch list the third category and fourth not in watch list not in watch list now you change the paragraph and write if a country is put under priority if a country is put under priority us administration will focus us administration will focus all its attention all its attention and shall adopt both carrot and stick approach and will adopt both carrot and stick approach to make that culprit country to make that culprit country fix its ipr regime fix its ipr regime with respect to india with respect to india the us tr has expressed reservations has expressed reservation it has marked india as a country it has marked india as a country where the ipr environment is not conducive is not conducive for the us companies for the us companies countries like algeria argentina chile china ecuador kuwait indonesia pakistan russia thailand and venezuela along with india have featured in the priority watch list these countries will be the subject these countries will be the subject of particularly intense bilateral engagement particularly intense bilateral engagement when was it published for the first time the 301 uh, special list when was it published for the first time it was published in 1989 and since then india has been put regularly under the priority watch list so you're right india is in this list india is in this list since the beginning of special 301 reports since the beginning of this special 301 reports in 1989 <clears throat> usa often uses some incentives 
to bring the countries which are kept under the priority list which are kept under the priority list and the priority watch list to adhere to the IPR principles to adhere to the IPR principles that are acknowledged by the USTR that are acknowledged by the USTR some of these incentives are it means the carrot some of these incentives are you can write in bullet form first bullet giving grants giving grants comma donations comma training and gadgets to officials to officials in legal police customs patent departments of that country of that country second bullet inviting judges inviting judges bureaucrats and businessmen inviting judges bureaucrats and businessmen for a paid trip to USA for a paid trip to USA for what why a paid trip to USA to uh, judges bureaucrats and businessmen to watch closely the IPR best practices in USA right to USA to observe its IPR regime and to learn from its IPR best practices third bullet free distance learning free distance learning modules in multiple languages in multiple languages for patent laws for patent laws related to the US and the WTO trips agreement and the WTO trips agreement next bullet the US also provides material and technical support the US also provides material and technical support to countries for fighting things like things like movie piracy internet piracy fraud etc <clears throat> now just to write a note though if the country still does not brings its IPR regime in tune with the established best practices in bracket to write as acknowledged by the USA as acknowledged by the USA close the bracket then the US administration then the US administration the federal government of USA the federal government of USA and the USTR imposes sanctions under section 306 of the trades act 
under Section 306 of the Trades Act, 1974, to bring such a recalcitrant, to bring such a recalcitrant, what do you mean by recalcitrant? Recalcitrant means one who is not listening to you. Clear? To bring such a recalcitrant country to predetermined, to predetermined acceptance levels, acceptance levels. Also, look, US bus here tak nahi it does not only imposes sanctions, but after that it pulls the country to the WTO. And India has been pulled. Can you give an example? Where was? Huh? Domestic. Yes, domestic content requirement with respect to solar panels. What happened to the case? Did India win the case? No, India lost the case. Clear? So right. US also pulls the country to the WTO arbitration panel, to the WTO arbitration panel designed for dispute resolution, now see that there is a lobby in United States of America mostly composed of businessmen of pharmaceutical companies they are doing everything that they can in their capacity to move India to the priority list from the priority watch list and impose the heaviest economic sanctions on India till India improves its IPR regime but we have seen in the last class that India's IPR policy is very much in tune with the TRIPS agreement what they are demanding is over the board uh, means you can say incentives that cannot be given because we have a domestic industry also to protect and we cannot if we make if we give patent to life threatening drugs or life saving drugs in case of life threatening diseases how much people how many people will suffer in India not only in India but in continents like Africa or Latin America because India supplies a lot of generic drugs there India has said that yes there will be um, patenting but in case of such very vital components, we shall not follow the process of evergreening of patent all the time. Are you clear with that? Because if that is done, then many of the lives of Indians will be jeopardized. So this is what has been done. So there is a lobby in USA which is hell-bent and wants to put India into the priority list. But the American government is helpless because India has become such an important cog in the wheel for their Indo-Pacific policy that they cannot just uh, afford the air of India as far as uh, such an important or delicate policy is concerned. But anyhow, I will not be surprised that if Donald Trump decides to put India in priority list just on the year when he is about to leave his office, so in 2020, to gain popular support among the business though it, it will be withdrawn don't worry about it even if that happens now have you seen that as uh, the Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan he visited and the statements that he has given you can understand that such statements would have never been made by India it is impossible because if you go by the uh, the agreements of the Shimla and other agreements you would see that uh, Jammu and Kashmir is a bilateral issue between India and Pakistan and in fact the parliament has spoken in one voice that it is an integral part of the Indian Union. So th the only negotiation that can happen with Pakistan is how to get back POK. That is the only negotiation that is possible and how to eradicate terrorism, how to reinstall the uh, pluralistic demographic characteristic of the valley which has been lost over the years and how to curb radicalization in the valley. Only these things can be put to table and of course Pakistan's sponsor sponsored terrorism and adequate justification for it. But you see that Donald Trump on his own has made a statement that he is willing to, US is willing to mediate. 
Now, mediation is a very uh, important diplomatic word. The word mediation means that for example, US mediated between Palestine and Israel. So, from a bilateral negotiation, it turns into a trilateral negotiation or multilateral negotiation depending upon how many mediators are there. Are you clear with that? This, is, this has been the US policy. US always does this, the carrot and stick and this time US has confronted a country which is very much expert in it and that is our country. And so you see uh, the foreign minister, external affairs minister, he categorically he said in the house of the, on the floor of the house that no such statement has been made from India. So the air is clear as far as that is concerned. Anyhow, the politics may happen over it. Forget that part. We must only follow what happens in the constitutional institutions. So in the floor of the house, it has been said that India has not made any such uh, requests. So that, that is what. So you can see Donald Trump doing that putting India into a priority list. So even if that happens, you just understand that it's just a political gimmick, a shenanigan. It will not last. So you're right. American MNC lobbyists, MNC lobbyists have been constantly demanding to put India, have been constantly demanding to put India in the priority list. Now, you give a heading, why India in priority watch list? Why India in priority watch list? You're right. According to USTR, according to USTR, Indian IPR regime is not stable. Indian IPR regime is not stable, not predictable, doesn't nurture or incentivize, does nurture or incentivize innovation. Indian laws favor local Indian manufacturers. Indian laws favor local Indian manufacturers and Indian multinational companies and Indian multinational companies. This prevents a free competition. and puts the foreign companies at a disadvantage. Therefore, India must be put under, must be put under priority watch list main reasons for keeping India in the priority watch list, main reasons for keeping India into the priority watch list are, now you write one, two, three, four, first you write movie piracy, movie piracy. Under that you write India does not have separate anti camcording anti camcording it means camera recording there's a short form for it camcording law that is if a that is if a person is found with a video camera if a person is found with a video camera in a cinema hall he must be arrested he must be arrested. Now, to some extent, this is correct. It happens in India. Clear? 
uh, in countries like US, Canada or Philippines, there is stern punishment for it. Because you are killing the incentive for doing good work. Because if you will not get the economic advantage out of it, then movie industry is actually a business. So it will kill the incentive to work. So you're right. Countries like USA, Canada, Philippines, etc. have strong laws for such strong laws for such camcordings, camcordings means camera recordings. While this is more or less an established practice, while this is more or less an established practice in countries like India, in countries like India. So this is the first reason, movie piracy. Second, internet piracy. India has one of the largest internet users in the world. India also does not have strong laws, strong laws with respect to internet piracy, internet piracy. If someone is caught in such activities, no severe punishment is awarded, no severe punishment is awarded. Next you write drug price control, drug price control. Now see, this is what India does and India does this because India is a welfare state. India has kept a ceiling with respect to MRP on particular drugs which are essential for saving lives that you cannot go beyond this. So it was 348 and presently it is about to be uh, declared that how many new drugs have been incorporated in it. So we will not go by the number because that can change with time but we will go by the policy that what actually it is clear. Now the drug pharmaceutical companies especially from the United States of America have expressed their serious reservation that how can a country fix the maximum retail price. Obviously they want to create a shortage of supply and then they want to make exorbitant gains from the Indian market and you know that everybody is willing to spend a lot on health because everybody wants to live. That's the first priority. Jaan hai to jahan. So you write, drug price control order, DPCO, drug price control order of India imposes MRP restriction, imposes MRP restriction on essential drugs, but under exceptional conditions. some drugs can be sold at higher price. Now India says very simple, a simple policy. India says that if you want to get away from this ceiling requirement, you have to meet two conditions. First, produce the drug in India. And second is use Indian technology. It means if India does not have the technology, transfer the technology. Because if you will come in my country and you will make excessive grains and then you will have, you will show there is a DTA, double tax avoidance agreement and you will take all the money back to your country. That is drain of wealth. Isn't that so? So you must pay back something from where you are taking because Indian companies are paying taxes. So you are right. 
put a comma if they are manufactured in India if they are manufactured in India using Indian technology also the foreign companies have to sell the same drug also the foreign companies have to sell the same drug at a price fixed by national pharmaceutical pricing authority NPPA national pharmaceutical pricing authority next trademarks India has a backlog India has a backlog of more than 1.5 lakh cases 1.5 lakh cases related to trademark misuse related to trademark misuse a FICCI report FICCI FICCI report says trademark owner lose nearly lose nearly 12 billion dollars 12 billion dollars per year because of counterfeit products in Indian market most vulnerable industries most vulnerable industries include automobile spare parts automobile spare parts comma liquor comma computer hardware comma packaged foods comma mobile phones and tobacco products next counterfeiting counterfeiting US Customs Department US Customs Department report says India is the top supplier of counterfeit India is the top supplier of counterfeit pharmaceuticals to USA India doesn't have separate laws India doesn't have separate laws to punish trade secret violations to punish trade secret violations it relies on an outdated it relies on an outdated contracts act give the heading evergreening the Novartis case what is evergreening how to, for what period patents are granted 20 years now what companies do is suppose it is made up of X plus Y plus Z this is what the drug is manufactured out of now what they do is they do this they do X plus Y plus Z plus Q where Q is a neutral agent has no impact on the drug does not improve its efficiency or its you can say therapeutic efficacy but yet apply again for a patent by making minor changes they try to make economic gains or what they do is suppose 
they can do this that patent is also given not only for the product but also for the process so this is what they do z plus y plus x and if x plus y plus z or z plus y plus x or you can say y plus z plus x in any order you put them the end product has no change that can happen are you clear with that though this is not true all the time because if you change the order of the chemical some other product may emerge but there can be chances that the order is not important or they add something which is a neutral agent has no impact are you clear with that like this neutral agent can be distilled water or something like that clear though it is not so simple but they try to find out chemicals which do not impact or even if they do this that they add one more suppose they do this q plus r and suppose they both cancel out each other's effects and the net result is x plus y plus z are you clear with that no this is very much technical i'm just trying to simplify it are you clear with that so you right evergreening is referred to the practice evergreening is referred to the practice whereby pharmaceutical firms whereby pharmaceutical firms extend the patent of a drug extend the patent of a drug by obtaining additional 20 year patents by obtaining additional 20 year patents for minor reformulations for minor reformulations or other iterations i t e r a t i o n s iterations of the drug without necessarily without necessarily increasing increasing the therapeutic efficacy t h e r a p e u t i c therapeutic efficacy right in the novartis glivec case in the novartis glivec case novartis attempted novartis attempted to get renew its patent by making superficial changes by making superficial changes in the drug molecule structure in the drug molecule structure but you know that the supreme court of india it prohibited the evergreening so you right but the supreme court of india prohibited this evergreening right in 2005 in 2005 when a condition was inserted in section 3d of the patent act regarding the efficacy of the drug regarding the efficacy of the drug it was interpreted as to it was interpreted as to the therapeutic the therapeutic efficacy of the drug therapeutic efficacy of the drug now when we talk about uh, improving the efficacy patent can be got only when you improve the efficacy or the efficiency now improving the efficacy doesn't mean improving the looks of it or some physical characteristic it means therapeutic efficacy clear therapeutic efficacy of the drug and not just the improvements and not just the improvements in the physical characteristics or stability of the product novartis filed an 
application before the Chennai Patent Office. Novartis filed an application before the Chennai Patent Office. Now, this was with respect to a drug and that drug is known as Gleevec, clear? With respect to its drug, with respect to its drug named Gleevec, write in caps, Gleevec. Now, what is Gleevec? It is a anti-cancer drug. So, you can write in bracket anti-cancer drug. Glivec was a different version of its 1993 patent of its 1993 patent for anti-cancer drug. Now, obviously, when this application was filed, the assistant controller of the Indian patent office in Chennai rejected the application and thus the case was filed in the Supreme Court. Clear? So, you are right. The assistant controller of patent and design, the assistant controller of patent and design, put a comma, Chennai patent office, Chennai patent office, that is India's patent office. Chennai Patent Office rejected the application under Section 3D of the Patent Act, 3 Clause D, write D in small uh, cases, 3D of the Patents Act. Novartis prayed to the court. and cried foul, prayed to the court and cried foul. Now, you see the lawyer of uh, who was fighting the case on behalf of Novartis, he said in the Supreme Court of India that section 3D is not in tune with the TRIPS agreement <laughs> and there they lost the case because it is very much in tune with the TRIPS agreement. So, you write, Novartis prayed to the court, uh, what did you write? foul and asked the court to declare and asked the court to declare section 3D of the patent amendment act, patent in bracket you write amendment close the bracket act 2005 as a clause which is non-compliant as a clause which is non-compliant with the TRIPS agreement. and violative and violative of which article of the constitution if they are claiming then it must be which article article 14 right to equality and violative of article 14 of the indian constitution <clears throat> the entire argument regarding violation of article 14 the entire argument regarding violation of article 14 was based was based on the premise was based on the premise that it was an arbitrary it was an arbitrary discretionary power vested in the patent controller in determination of enhanced efficacy now the indian patent laws are such that yes we respect the patent and we want to um, protect the patents that's why you see that under startup india if you file a patent no fee is to be given if you file a patent within the first three years of your, uh, you establish your business and suppose you file a patent, you will have to pay no patent fee. That is what is promised under Startup and Stand Up India. 
but also on the other hand india does not want to promote or encourage ever greening of pit why because that would lead to a monopolistic hold of a particular entity over the market are you clear with that rather it would also not give a fair level playing field to new uh, companies who want to enter into the same field clear so you right the court said that the aim of the indian patent system the court said that the aim of the indian patent system is to discourage the extension is to discourage the extension of patent after the expiry of the patent term discourage the extension of the patent after the expiry of the patent term of 20 years so that other firms can produce and market the drug so that other firms can produce and market the drug the court said that the amendment was intended to the court said that the amendment was intended to now write in bullets first bullet prevent ever greening prevent ever greening second to provide easy access to provide easy access to the citizens of this country for life saving drugs to enable the governments to enable the governments to discharge their constitutional obligation to discharge their constitutional obligation of providing health care of providing health care to its citizens to its citizens you write a conclusion novartis lost novartis lost a 6 year legal battle a 6 year legal battle after the court ruled after the court ruled that small changes and improvements to the drug glivec small changes and improvements to the drug glivec did not amount to innovation did not amount to innovation deserving a patent deserving a patent the ruling opened the doors for generic companies the ruling opened the door for generic companies in india to manufacture to manufacture and sell cheap copies sell cheap copies of the drug in the developing world it also has implications with respect to future applications relating to evergreening now obviously you can understand when ustr put india into the priority watch list this case was highlighted by the ustr saying that see this is a country and its ipr regime totally biased against foreign companies and nationals but obviously india is functioning as per law and that law is section 3d of the patents act so you right but the mnc pharma lobbies but the mnc pharma lobbies portrayed this case in a different tone in a different tone as if indian judiciary 
as if Indian judiciary and laws are biased against foreigners. Hence you see that uh, the special report 301, it categorically puts down that India is biased against innovation and is not conducive for innovation, see right. Hence the USTR mentioned in special 301 report, mentioned in special 301 report, Indian Patent Act prevents innovation. Hence, hence the USTR and the US administration, the USTR and the US administration wants India to scrap section 3D, scrap section 3D of the Patent Act relating to evergreening, relating to evergreening, evergreening. Yes. But uh, if they are producing X plus Y plus Z mm. right now, mm. then uh, what is the uh, problem for no, If they are doing this, suppose they got the patent. After 20 years? 20 years. Some other company produces X plus Y plus Z. There is no problem. There is no problem. The patent is over. When the patent is over, everyone can do it. Clear. Only when the patent is in place, no one can replicate it. But what they do is, they make some minor changes, superficial, ornamental or cosmetic in nature. They are not real changes and thus they claim again a patent. And no sir, but a new patent will be given, no? Hmm. But the original drug can be produced. No, because they would do this, that the patent is for the entire procedure. And procedures might have sub-procedures. Did you get it? Do you understand what he is trying to ask? He is saying that we can follow the same procedure because the new procedure is x plus y plus z plus q plus r. But they would say patent not only the entire procedure but also the sub procedures. And by that they are clever enough and they have an array of lawyers sitting at their disposal. Clear? So next is compulsory licensing or the next war case. This is another case, yes. Yes, but that is already addressed in the new IPR policy, if you see. It is one of the objectives. Okay, compulsory license, Nexwar judgment, if you write. Nexwar is a German company. Nexwar is a German company. Bayer Pharma, B A Y E R, Y E R. Like, have you heard about Bayer Munich? Similarly, Bayer Pharma's, Bayer Pharma's patented drug, patented drug for liver and kidney cancers, for liver and kidney cancers. Now, it was 2008 when uh, Biopharma got a patent for Nexwar. Now, let me tell you the cost of Nexwar. It is a very small, uh, you can say, box of medicines which contains 120 tablets, anti-cancer tablets with respect to liver and kidney cancers. 120 tablets, the cost is 2.5 lakh rupees and India has one of the largest population that suffers from kidney and liver ailments, clear? So let us see what happened, see right, in 2008, in 2008, Bayer, 
B A Y E R. That's the company. Bayer got patent in India. Its one twenty tablet pack costs. Its one twenty tablet pack costs more than two point five lakh rupees. 2.5 lakh rupees and you must understand this 2.5 lakh rupees as per the exchange rate of 2008 clear so in bracket you write as per the 2008 exchange rate as per 2008 exchange rate now there's a indian company called natco pharma it decided to it sought permission from the government of india to produce a generic version of it and government was also under severe criticism that such an important drug and you have granted patent for it so right next in 2012 natco pharma natco natco pharma it's a um, hyderabad based firm natco pharma in bracket you can write hyderabad if you want sought permission to produce generic version of the same drug and to sell it at cheap price okay you right the main argument of natco pharma was that buyers drug b a y e r s apostrophe s buyers drug was too expensive and the poor indian public and the poor indian public cannot afford it they intend to sell the same drug they intend to sell the same drug at much cheaper rate by establishing manufacturing plants so see the indian authorities asked buyer that okay we have granted you the patent but it is going beyond the ceiling limit and if that is happening then there are certain conditions that you must meet and what is that you must produce the drug in india so what was the reply it was given you know we have no problem in producing the drug in india but the problem is that it will not be a good business move it will not be benefiting us from the business view point so you right buyer's argument was that buyer's argument was that we don't want to set up manufacturing plants in india because it would be a loss making proposition because it would be a loss making proposition from the point of view of business from the point of view of business obviously india's controller general, general of patents gave permission to natco to produce this drug and all the case started beyond that so you right india's controller general of patents ordered to give compulsory license ordered to give compulsory license to natco hyderabad to natco hyderabad to produce the said patented drug under section 84 under section 84 of india's patent act
but he made a provision uh, the indian uh, official he made a provision he said that whatever money you will gain who natco pay 6% of that to buyer as royalty clear shoes right further he said further he said that natco should pay 6% royalty to buyer so uh nat uh, your buyer could not withstand such a decision so it appealed to the intellectual property board and got defeated then it appealed to the bombay high court it got defeated again so you right buyer appeal to intellectual property appellate board appeal to intellectual property appellate board but was defeated <clears throat> it also it also met the same fate in the bombay high court clear the bombay high court also defeated so what would have been the next step of buyer to make an appeal to the supreme court but the supreme court you know are you aware of the appellate jurisdiction of the supreme court and what does it say that an automatic appeal from the high court to the supreme court will lay under some special cases like for example the high court has taken a proceeding that is pending before a lower court before itself reverse the decision and acquitted person has been convicted and given death penalty under such extreme conditions or the high court certifies that there is a question of law which requires interpretation of constitution or there is a question of law of public importance these are the conditions but the high court has given its decision and there is no certificate but they are not aware of this so they appeal to the supreme court so what should the supreme court do the supreme court put aside the application it did not entertain the application and that was the end to the legal proceeding clear again a victory for the indian generic firms so you right in december 2014 in december 2014 the supreme court of india refused to entertain buyers appeal refused to entertain buyers appeal to set aside the compulsory license on sora fenib no sora fenib is nothing but your a next war it is buyer which calls it next war whereas natco calls it sora fenib things are same the supreme court's dismissal the supreme court's dismissal of buyers special leave petition buyers special leave petition special leave under which article 1 1 appeal by special leave 136 <laughs> special leave petition against the bombay high court's decision against the bombay high court's decisions and upheld the high court's verdict and upheld the vike high court's verdict thereby concluding the legal proceedings about the first ever compulsory licensing case in india about the first ever compulsory licensing case for india obviously again you can understand ustr highlighted this see so right the ustr write a conclusion 
the USTR highlighted this incident too as an event which goes against which goes against the IPR protection in India. It said that Indian judiciary and its judges, Indian judiciary and its judges base their decisions on laws that are not in tune base their decisions on laws that are not in tune with the WTO TRIPS agreement, with the WTO TRIPS agreement. The compulsory licensing clause was criticized as it hurts foreign pharma companies and companies in the green energy sector. Clear? Next, you give the heading implications for India. Implications for India. So they did not go to uh, WTO or something? They could not because the case was filed under the Indian Patent Act then they have to make a new case. So you write uh, implications for India. So under that first bullet you write no negative implications, no negative implications for India so far, for India so far because it is only in priority watch list country, because it is only in priority watch list country and not in priority foreign country and not in priority foreign country. Second, USTR reviews the trading partners on annual basis. USTR reviews the trading partners on annual basis. But for India, USTR had gone for an out of cycle review, out of cycle review, this is known as OCR review, OCR, out of cycle review, OCR in late September, in late September 2014. means it is done on an annual basis but for India they were so apprehensive that they started doing it on a quarterly basis at least for 2014 because you understand that when was this decision given final decision December 2014 in September they are putting India into the priority watch list high category it means now we will push you into priority foreign country so as to influence the decision but you know Supreme Court of India does not get influenced by such things. So, right, in future, if USA, in future, if USA puts India on priority foreign country status, puts India into priority foreign country status and puts sanctions over India under US trade laws. then India can drag USA, then India can drag USA to the WTO arbitrary tribunals, arbitration sorry, WTO arbitration tribunals because the Indian Patent Act and the Indian Patent Policy, the Indian Patent Act and the Indian patent policy are fully in tune 
with the WTO TRIPS agreement, are fully in tune with the WTO TRIPS agreement. Besides, India can also adopt, besides India can also adopt tit for tat sanctions, tit for tat sanction. And if that is done, USA will lose more than India. Hence, it is very unlikely, it is very unlikely that India will be pushed into the priority foreign country list, into the priority foreign country list. Clear? So, do you understand? That is all about the IPR. If there is a question now with respect to IPR, you must write all these features, even 1, 2, 2, 3 lines, you incorporate all these features. Then the answer looks very beautiful. Also, if there is an essay on IPR, then you can write the entire thing, whatever we have written. But all, obviously not in a language of GS answer, but in an essay's language. Clear? By following all the things, like whatever we did in the class with respect to essay. So next, you give the heading. Digital Communications Policy 2018. Digital Communication Policy 2018. Now, see, there is a topic mentioned in your uh, syllabus. Awareness with respect to IT and computers. Don't think that they would ask you uh, what are the different generations of computers or computer architecture though these are awareness about the IT and computer but as far as this topic is concerned they would ask you more things like 5G technology, digital India or the communication policy that is awareness with respect to IT and computers are you clear with that? So this topic is uh, as it is written in the syllabus the content is totally different are you clear with that? So we will focus only on that aspects those aspects of it. Clear? So you write, digital infrastructure and services, digital infrastructure and services have emerged as significant enablers, have emerged as significant enablers and critical determinants and critical determinants of a country's growth and well-being, of a country's growth and well-being, with significantly advanced capabilities, with significantly advanced capabilities in both telecommunication and software, in both telecommunication, with significantly advanced capabilities in both telecommunication and software. India more than most countries, more than most countries stands poised, stands poised, poised to benefit, to benefit from harnessing the new digital technologies and platforms, the new digital technologies and platforms as a means to unlock productivity, as a means to unlock productivity, as well as to reach unserved and underserved markets. Thus catalyzing, thus catalyzing, it means acting as a catalyst, catalyzing economic growth and facilitating inclusive and sustainable development, 
inclusive and sustainable development emphasis on digital communications emphasis on digital communications shall also generate new age jobs and livelihoods and shall ensure access and shall ensure access to next generation to next generation services for the citizens like internet of things 5g etc the task before india's policy makers the task before india's policy makers is to ensure is to ensure that the advantages of the new technology are accessible to all are accessible to all in what way in what way it can be accessible to all at a very high cost do we want that no at affordability and reliability so right accessible to all equitably affordably equitably affordably and reliably and reliably while securing them against while securing them against existing and emerging threats next you change the paragraph and write india needs to particularly ensure india needs to particularly ensure that its communication infrastructure that its communication infrastructure supports the entire population whose demographic whose demographic profiles vary widely profiles vary widely across various indices such as literacy economic conditions and urbanization it is important for india it is important for india to remain sensitive to these factors and then promote and then promote policies that increase opportunities then promote policies that increase opportunities now you give a small subheading digital india is already unfolding digital india is already unfolding now india has one of the largest profiles and internet footprint is that so yes so you right india's digital profile india's digital profile and footprint is one of the fastest growing in the world with over a billion mobile phones a billion mobile phones a billion mobile phone means can two mobile phone have the same phone number no it means billion mobile phones means what it means over billion virtual identities clear so right billion mobile phones in bracket you can write virtual digital identities virtual digital identities and half a billion internet users and half a billion internet users 
इंडिया मोबाइल डेटा कंजम्पन इंडिया मोबाइल डेटा कंजम्पन टूडे इज वन ऑफ द हाइएस्ट इन द वर्ल्ड टूडे इज वन ऑफ द हाइएस्ट इन द वर्ल्ड ओवर टू हंड्रेड मिलियन ओवर टू हंड्रेड मिलियन इंडियंस रेगुलरली यूज सोशल मीडिया ओवर टू हंड्रेड मिलियन मिलियन इंडियंस रेगुलरली यूज सोशल मीडिया and in the last 18 months and the and in the last 18 months over 200 million indians over 200 million indians took to mobile banking and digital payments and digital payments especially after in the aftermath of the demonetization so in bracket you can write in the aftermath of the demonetization at current pace of digitization at current pace of digitization and digitalization digitization and digitalization it is estimated that india's digital economy has the potential to reach one trillion us dollars one trillion us dollars by 2025 by 2025 do you remember that we want to become a 5 trillion economy by 20 24 so out of that 5 trillion 1 trillion will be online clear through digital channels next you write the rapid and unprecedented proliferation the rapid and unprecedented proliferation of the mobile phone of the mobile phone the internet social media platforms digital payments data consumption and generation across india indicate that the data economy indicate that the data economy and digital technologies are services no longer the prerogative of the privileged few it means everyone is using internet nowadays clear it is not limited to a esteemed class so right it has been it has been broadly estimated broadly estimated that a 10% that a 10% increase in broadband penetration in broadband penetration in a country could potentially lead to an over 1% increase lead to an over 1% increase in gdp in gdp okay just 10% to increase the broadband penetration and the gdp will grow by 1% and you can understand that's why the optical fiber network government is pushing it with such earnestness clear next you give the heading what should india do what should india do now in bullet wise you write first bullet currently india has approximately currently india has approximately 1.5 million kilometers 1.5 million kilometers of optical fiber network of optical fiber network 
and less than one fourth of the towers, I mean the mobile towers, less than one fourth of the towers are fiber connected, are fiber connected. India must expand this network, India must expand this network. Second bullet you write, India should focus, India should focus on fixed infrastructure development. and right of way R I G H T of W A Y way put right of way into single inverted commas right of way clearances that will form the bedrock that will form the bedrock of next generation technologies. Technologies third bullet technologies like 5G, cloud computing, IoT, IoT means internet of things, IoT and data analytics. Have you heard about big data? Yes. So, in bracket you write big data must be given an impetus. So, 600,000 villages have been connected to broadband under the initiative known as what is the initiative? Bharatnet. See so you right. Projects like Bharatnet, projects like Bharatnet, which has connected more than 600,000 villages to broadband by broadband, Karlo, by broadband must be encouraged. Next bullet, if India wants to embrace fourth industrial revolution, if India wants to embrace fourth industrial revolution, every sector must be digitized, every sector must be digitized. Next a robust competitive landscape, a robust competitive landscape which ensures availability of new communication technologies, of new communication technologies, services and applications. Must be promoted. Next, improvements in regulation must be done. Regulatory effort, regulatory effort is not a one time effort, but a long term multi dimensional multi uh, disciplinary multi dimensional multi disciplinary progressive process progressive process now one thing india must attain if india wants to go ahead that is in, is india a sovereign country yes but it is not digitally sovereign still dependent like the GPS the server where is the server it is in USA so right last India must promote digital sovereignty digital sovereignty so under that you write next you change the paragraph and you write keeping all these objectives in mind keeping all these objectives in mind the Department of Telecommunication DOT, the Department of Telecommunication has released the National Digital Communication Policy, has released the National Digital Communication Policy 2018. 
the aim is to achieve digital empowerment and establish digital sovereignty aim is to achieve digital empowerment and establish digital sovereignty now you give a small heading national digital communication policy 2018 national digital communication policy 2018 now very small policy not a big policy so right it aims to achieve it aims to achieve and accomplish the following strategic objectives the following strategic objectives by 2022 in 2000 22 2022 now you write in bullet forms first bullet provisioning of broadband for all provisioning of broadband for all second creating 4 million additional jobs creating 4 million additional jobs in the digital communication sector in the digital communication sector next enhancing the contribution of the digital communication sector to 8% of india's gdp 8% of india's gdp from the present levels of 7 6% from the present levels of 6% next propelling india propelling india to the top 50 nations in ict development index ict development index of itu itu what is india's current rank I do ICT index. It is one thirty odds something. Clear. So uh, I think it is. I'm not very sure, but I think it is one thirty four or one thirty five with respect to the two thousand seventeen rating. When this policy was came out, it could take two thousand seventeen into consideration, right? But you just check it somewhere. You make a star in front of it. One thirty four. Put a hyphen. 2017. It can be 135 or 134. Between these two numbers, it's not. My memory is not serving me. Next, you write. Next bullet. Enhancing India's contribution to global value chain networks. Enhancing India's contribution to global value chain networks. And finally, last point. Ensuring digital sovereignty. Ensuring. digital sovereignty next you change the line and you write a fresh line the national digital communication policy 2018 the national digital communication policy 2018 envisages three missions these three connect india propel india and secure india that's it so right first connect india connect india under that put a hyphen and write creating robust digital communication infrastructure creating robust digital communication infrastructure to promote broadband for all as a tool for socio economic development as a tool for socio economic development while ensuring service quality and environmental sustainability service quality and environmental 
sustainability second propel india propel india enabling next generation technologies enabling next generation technologies and services through investments innovation and ipr generation to harness the power of to harness the power of emerging digital technologies emerging digital technologies including 5g ai artificial intelligence ai iot cloud computing and big data to enable provision of future ready products and services to enable provision of future ready products and services put a semicolon and to catalyze and to catalyze the fourth industrial revolution fourth industrial revolution the last one secure india yes see the generally what happens is you store your data in a secondary device now this is your secondary storage now this can be in house or it can be distant it means you create some remote storages are you clear with that why you do this because suppose there is a accident at the point of this data location then at least the data is not destroyed because there is a copy that has been made but it increases the total cost isn't that so because you have to keep a lot and you have to ensure their security also if this is sensitive data one major way is to store the data in the virtual network like suppose there is an important file you mail it to yourself don't you do that so you are actually using it the virtual space the cloud computing is that where a number of nodes are connected to a centralized network that not only share data but can they can also share resources are you clear with that like for example this computer can give a print command to this computer if it has a printer associated whereas this has none are you clear with that it is sharing of resources and accessing of data but this is much detailed than this just in, because uh, that is a term which is used because it is in the virtual because you are sending it somewhere away it is not on the ground so it's a virtual cloud it's not a real cloud it doesn't mean that it has to do something with the meteorological cloud cloud it has nothing to do with that clear it is just it is also, say, it can be accessed anywhere yes it can be it can be accessed anywhere that's why and mostly cloud computing is the buzzword today because of the growth of wireless technology you don't want to carry everything around but you just need to access the cloud it is nothing but resource sharing and uh, it brings down the cost because everyone is paying for it yes that functions on cloud computing so right last secure india ensuring sovereignty safety and security ensuring sovereignty safety and security of digital communications to secure the interests of citizens and safeguard the digital sovereignty of india digital sovereignty of india with a focus on ensuring with a focus on ensuring individual autonomy put a comma choice data ownership privacy and security put a semicolon and write while recognizing data while recognizing data 
as a crucial economic resource as a crucial economic resource so uh, did we discuss the day one questions of science and tech Now look here. First question: A new class of collaborative, mobile, and increasingly intelligent robot promises to transform several industries. In the light of the above statement, discuss the various potential applications of robotics in India. A very simple question: What you have to do here? The introduction, body, and the conclusion. With respect to the introduction, you must first highlight what are robots. and the different types of robots do you remember mobile robots and all those type of robots so the robots types of robots and what is robotics in the introduction that's it introduction will be shall like that then second in the body it shall be that which are the areas where robots have applications like medical agriculture defense planning etc you have written that so you must highlight all of that in the body but the conclusion is the most important part of this question because this most of the people will do in the conclusion you must highlight how robotics in compliance with artificial intelligence can transform the economy can change the society and can bring like if it brings jobs then it will change transform the society so it will facilitate economic growth it will transform the society and it would propel innovation a culture of skill development this is what you have to highlight in the conclusion it's very simple straight forward question clear second question as india inches to achieve its rightful strategic autonomy it needs to do much more in planting the seeds for a commercially viable and technologically robust indigenous defense industrial base that we have already discussed necessity of it so here also how you would go around in the introduction you highlight first that why defense modernization is important for india at this point clear then in the body first part of the body should deal with what are the challenges in defense modernization and how defense indigenization is a solution then next part of the body should deal with that what are the solutions with respect to defense indigenization and in the conclusion you must highlight that defense indigenization will not only make india self reliant but will also improve india's exports with respect to defense are you clear with that so again i am repeating first you should highlight in the introduction why defense modernization is important and what role indigenization shall play in such modernization in the body the challenges in the path of indigenization the solutions for the indigenization that we have already written clear and then finally how it would make india self reliant and would give india an avenue to earn revenue are you clear with that that constitutes the question okay hold it 
let us go to the day 2 one. I know the second question you have not written. Have you written the day 2 one? You haven't? You haven't written? Okay, let's do one thing today. I'm telling you what to write. Then you attempt it to write. Okay? So on the promise that you will write. Okay. So you look here. So we have introduction, body and conclusion. Look at the first question. A fair and transparent IPR policy is indispensable for economic growth and innovation. In the light of the above statement, discuss the salient feature of India's IPR policy. Straightforward question. So in the introduction, you must highlight what is IPR and you can make a fact box to highlight different types of IPR or you can make a box to highlight the different laws under which IPR is uh, practiced here in India. In the body, you must highlight the vision, the mission and the objectives of the IPR policy. Do you remember? We have written this. And then you must highlight the seven objectives which India has uh, highlighted in the IPR policy. The vision, the mission and the objectives. Remember the objectives were seven objectives. And in the conclusion, you must write that what are the concerns with respect to India's IPR. For example, the 301 priority watch list. Are you clear with that? That is what you must highlight and how India needs to fight back these kind of apprehensions to ensure that there is investment and there is innovation at the same time. Simple straightforward question. Dusra wala usse bhi simple. In the context of India's intellectual property regime, the Novartis and Nexwar judgments are important landmarks. So the first one is with respect to evergreening and the second one is what? Compulsory licensing. What happened to uh, the Glivac case of Novartis? Novartis lost. What happened to Nexwar? The Supreme Court did not entertain its appeal. The Bombay High Court, it was wrong. This Glivac is an anti-cancer drug, whereas uh, Nexwar is a liver and kidney. The company here is Bayer, German, whereas this company is Novartis is the company, Glivec is the drug, whereas Nexwar is the drug and Bayer is the company. You must also highlight about Natco. Clear? Simple question. Yes, I am telling you that. So the content is very simple. Now in the introduction, what you have to do is first you must highlight that why there are some apprehensions about the IPR in India. Clear? Here what you concluded becomes the introduction for this question. The 301 priority watch list and why India has been kept into that category. In the body you should divide it into two parts because the question is saying you to do so. So the first part should deal with the evergreening issues and the Novartis judgment and then the compulsory licensing issues and the next word judgment. So deal with both and then in the conclusion, you write what we have written in the conclusion. That if in future, US decides to put sanctions, then it will be a loss situation for US. Also, India's laws are in tune with WTO trips and India can also pull USA into the WTO. Are you clear with that? One more thing you can write that intellectual property and evergreening, India respects it, but not over the welfare of her citizens. Are you clear with that? And if India then puts claims over US with respect to yoga, say IPR, that they, you have violated the IPRs on yoga for such a long time or Ayurveda, it is very becoming very popular in USA, especially in um, say states like California. A lot of people are now uh, resorting to Ayurveda kind of medicine treatment. So if India takes to uh, claim your IPR over this, then these are also tools. Are you clear with that? that? That is what you have to write. These four questions, very, very important kind of questions and can be asked to you. That's it for the day. Thank you very much.